So that that's there's the answer. And now let's talk briefly about conservation of momentum. So remember last time we 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 um, considered a say part of the crust of the Earth. And we said that, you know, it had some surface forces that we called tractions. And then, you know, any little infinitesimal body, any little infinitesimal body would also <coughs> have a body force acting on it. So we have tractions, we have surface forces, and we have body forces. And this is sort of where we kind of started for the, to develop that, the Cauchy stress equation or the, you know, the, the, uh, we, we wrote the conservation momentum equation on the little tetrahedron, but then we, you know, since we said stress exists at a point, right, we shrunk the tetrahedron to a point, right, and the sort of right-hand side, the, the MA went away when we did that, okay. Right so now we're not going to consider an infinitesimal point, we're going to consider a, a finite volume, okay, and we're going to write down Newton's second law, and so if, if this little infinitesimal, you know, in words, Newton's second law, is, or, you know, it's conservation of linear momentum is that, in words, it's the, the time rate of change of linear momentum right, is equal to the forces applied. So the time rate of change of linear momentum is equal to the forces applied. Linear momentum is mass times velocity, right? So if we if our little cube here has a little differential mass dm because it's a it's a little infinitesimal cube, so we have a little differential mass dm, then a, diff a little differential momentum vector would be equal to the velocity times dm, okay. And dm dm could be written as the density times the volume, right? The mass of anything is the density times the volume, okay? So then that's the little differential. If, if we wanted to actually figure it out what it, the total momentum was in the whole body, then we could integrate over the body, right? So then the, the total momentum is equal to the integral V rho dV, okay? So again, in words, so this is the total momentum. And I said in words, Newton's second law is the time rate of change of linear momentum is equal to the forces applied. So then we want the time rate of change of P. So we want dP dt or d dt V rho dV is equal to the forces applied. Well, what are my forces? I have body forces. So those body forces, again, in the whole body, uh, you know, it's essentially the mass times B, which is rho dV is the mass times B. plus all of the tractions over all of the surfaces, right? So I just drew one. I just drew one, but, you know, there, there could potentially be an infinite number of tractions around the surface. Okay, so that's, that's Newton's second law. Now, What I'm going to do here only applies, okay, if this volume doesn't change with time, okay? If the volume doesn't change with time, I can move that inside the integral. 
This is a valid assumption only for small deformations. Okay? So if you ever, you probably wouldn't get to it until graduate school, but if you ever get to uh, a, a graduate class uh, where you have very, very large deformations, then you can't, you can't just move this inside there without doing anything else. You have to use something called Reynolds transport theorem, which you might cover in, in transport, right? Because in transport, you, you essentially write the same equation it, over a volume of fluid. Well, the volume of fluid as it moves through time definitely changes. Right? And so when you, you can't just move, when you move this inside, you get this sort of convective term, which you might have seen. So, anyway. For now, we're dealing with a solid, we're dealing with a piece of the crust of the Earth. The solid is not going to deform a lot. The volume of the solid is not going to deform a lot. So I'm going to move this inside. Okay. When I move it, in, I'm also going to consider that the density is constant, so that I get dV dt. The second term is not going to change at all. And in the last term, okay, this term, remember calc 3? You probably thought, you know, vector calculus, right? You probably thought you'd never use that again. We're going to use it one time. So in calc 3, I'm sure you learned something called the divergence theorem. The divergence theorem allows you to basically transform a surface integral into a volume integral. Okay? And so uh, we're not going to derive it or go through all the details. I'm just going to say, via the divergence theorem, in Calc 3, we can transform this into, uh, well, we can transform this into a, uh, a volume integral. Uh, also recall that we derived an equation that said that the surface tractions are equal to the stress times the normal vector. That was the equation we derived from that little tetrahedron. Right? So I'm going to, before, when I, before I apply the divergence theorem, I'm going to plug that in there so that I actually have sigma, the stress times the normal vector. Then I'm going to apply the divergence theorem. Okay. And the reason I wanted to do that was because now, where I had two volume integrals and a surface integral, now I have all volume integrals. What? This, this is a divergence operator. You'll see what it is written out in a second. It's a divergence operator. And so it's like... Like that, right? Take take whatever would be there in this case sigma, but it could be a, b, it could be anything. Take whatever would be there and plug it there. Okay, so so now that these are all over volume integrals, this volume, I mean, this equation must hold for any volume. So if the equation, the volume is arbitrary. And so if the equation must hold for any, var any volume, then the sum of the integrands, or what's in the integra integrands themselves, must also equate, right? So I can basically just pull out what's in the integrands. This is called the Cauchy 
momentum momentum equation so just look at the equation what's the time rate of change of the velocity the acceleration okay so and so if I multiply this whole equation by a volume, right, I have density times volume, that's mass. Right? So I have mass times acceleration, MA. Okay. Likewise, if I multiply, you know, if I carry the multiplication through on the right hand side, I have density times volume, which is mass. Uh, the units of this B are force per unit volume. So then I have force. And likewise, if you compute, if you work through the units of what the divergence of stress is, it's also force per unit volume. So the units of this thing is force per unit volume. So if I multiply by volume, I have force. So I have mass times acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces. Newton's second law. Uh, well, the 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 well because I mean we, we derived it from a conservation of linear momentum right we basically said that the the linear momentum is conserved right so I mean that's you know, we wrote down dp and you know. and so uh, While I wrote it very compactly, this is what, if you wrote out the, the, that diver that's actually three equations, right? dV, V is a vector, three spatial components, right? The divergence of stress, stress has got nine components, right? So when I compute the divergence of it, so it, it, it actually, that one equation I wrote is really a vector equation that represents three equations like this. Here I've written it in terms of the displacement. so. The first derivative of the displacement is velocity. And I take another derivative, and that gives me acceleration. So, so I have, these are your acceleration components, and then there's your stress components. Uh, and, and you know that's all the terms written out. So that one equation we derived works out to this guy. All right? So next time, we'll start to talk about stresses in the Earth and the simplifications we can make to these equations because of the nature of the principal stresses in the Earth, something we know about. Uh,